Back to the question, so you can see the first grade in the background. Daniel Anderson, uh, done it tough out there today, mate. Your forge really took it up and made it made it work, and they couldn't. We'll get back to it. For the third time on this take, Daniel and Forge uh, were the main is the go. They went out there today, they played it strong, and met uh, Uni's forwards that they couldn't come back, mate. Uh, we were just too strong on the day. We had huge hitters out there, you know. Uh, we had huge hitters out there. Um, Pete McCallum, huge game. It's been a tough season all up, and I'm really looking forward to getting pissed tonight. Mate, is it one of these things that you got that adrenaline pumping from last night? Mate, last night, then drew it on all the way through to this morning and just played a rip of the Sardo. Well, after the, uh, the win last night and the horses, you know, I was on top of the world. I could have done anything. Yeah. Well, mate, um, in the... In the, in the uh, in the uh, book that last year we were saying that you probably were one of the slowest men in rugby league, but uh, it really showed today you are the slowest man in rugby league. Well, if I did make a break, yeah, I was brought down very quickly. <laughs> I am very slow. Well, you didn't even sort of break a tackle. I mean, even when you gave that great pass to Michelle Lepre to put him in, uh, it was just, just you were slow and you didn't even get right around him. Fierce headwind. Fierce <laughs> headwind. It was just too hard to run into. Right. Um, does, do you going to be doing a lot of drinking out of that mug? Yes. Okay. Congratulations to both of you fellas. If there's anything you'd like to say to your girlfriends? No, I don't have a girlfriend. Robin Talon's yours, isn't she? No, that's um, Steve Hampson. I mean, Michelle Bray. Oh, oh. I seen her with you last night. I mean, out the Shh. back. Oh, Patch Killen. The, oh, you were seen with... Um, Robin Talon. Robin Talon. Oh, yeah. She's a woman. What can I say? She can't <laughs> help herself. Okay, thanks very much, gentlemen. Welcome to uh, One Man Band TV here today. I've been totally abandoned for this first grade match. Uh, so the entire technical department and commentary department will be myself for the time being. We've sent off a scout to try and find some staff. We'll see how we go. So it's, so it's horns before the initial attempt and the ball's gone off the mound. Well, not a good start to the match. Could be a sign of things to come weather-wise. Never will I forget the weather of last year's grand final. What a horror. Moves in for the kick. Well, continuing the horror stretch of kicks for uh, all teams so far today. And it'll be college to take the ball out. So has anyone, they haven't got a ball. Dave Fletcher there looking for the ball. Geez, they need peak caps out there. It's so damn sunny. It's a little hard to see the players' faces. I've only got a little black and white screen. 
drop out from Fletcher. Have no idea where the ball is. Hosby take it up there, on about the halfway line. Big hits expected from College now. There's the big hits, I can't even see who that is. The focus isn't working. Ball comes out, they're already hinting at using their backs. Oh, well that's gotta be Ford. I think Mud came down with that, hard to see. The red hair doesn't show you up too well on this black and white camera. Well, it might be the film's colour, but I only get a black and white picture. They pack down the scrum. Canberra's feed, that's a bit of an upset. Ricky Stewart wearing headgear today. 5-8 for Canberra, likes to show the ball, but he usually takes it himself. Now they use the backs. Martin Anderson fresh from a big, big tour of England. <coughs> this is very hard to film, hold the microphone, keep one eye shut. But, oh, well. Not as hard as it is for college to defend. Well, they've let in a try very early in the match. That's only 346 seconds into the match and they've let in the first try. Quite an easy one up the middle and the defence will have to improve from that effort. Well, will we see almost a repeat of last year in which three grades from the college made it into the grand final? Only one grade managed to win. Well, it's early days yet. Mud lays down the law. God, I don't know how I got roped into this job. I'm standing up here all on my own, 50 yards away from a bunch of blokes who are all drinking and having a good time, and I'm standing here on my own. It's a little bit hard to take a sip of my beer when I've got one hand's holding the mic, the other hand's holding the camera. <laughs> they call it a Catholic college, not much. Christian values going on here, no one offering to come over and help me. That's 6-0 uh, to Hornsby. What really annoys me is that on grand final day, everyone goes out after the night and gets pissed anyway, so no one watches the video. Well, that's a sure sign, as Jeff Cowling would say, a sure sign of a team in trouble. So, a big chance for College here to get back in this match. Let's hope the ref doesn't give some standard shitty penalty. So, College, big chance now. Hampo gives it out. Anderson now, international. Oh, I see Mark Harrington on the wing there. Bit of an upset selection. He's gone from third grade grand final last year to first grade. Still on the wing, of course. Well, here's a chance for college to narrow the margin to four points. Dave Fletcher, well, he's a good shot. In other sports as well, he's... Uh, Renowned uh, goal shooter in netball. I guess I shouldn't say that.
Well, Paul Donkin, just informed me, apologised to me, said he hasn't found any co-crew for me, so I'm stuck here for the rest of the day, bored shitless. How I'd love a beer. Uh, then again, if I had one, I wouldn't be able to use it. You commentating, Batty? Yeah, I do. Well, we got a commentary team at least, so I can at least have a spare hand to take a few swigs of my beer. Of course, my beer's empty. Uh, trying to hand off the microphone. Well, and still talking without the mic. <laughs> right, I've got it though. <laughs> and the score 6 2 as one of the few goals today that's gone over the posts. One of the few kicks that's gone over the posts today. 6 2. Dave Fletcher looking for line. Invariably misses his first kick for line, Dave Fletcher. And sometimes this can be a uh, bit of a standard that we can match his game on. Well, he's found it this time. Not a great kick, but still he's found it. He hasn't really got the body of a, of a good line kicker, has he? No, but uh, I was speaking to him a little earlier in the week and he was hitting this would be his last season. So it doesn't really matter anymore whether he's got the body of a kicker or not. Playing move, set move, Beaky International. He's brought down, 10 metres out. Solid defence. There's Gary George. Gary George, one of the nice men of rugby league. He's... Uh, Always got a kind word for everyone, even the opposition on occasions. And there's Hampo, head down, bum up, and that's the way he ended. It's a young Tui. I feel like one of them myself at the moment, too. And I wouldn't mind one either, just quietly. <laughs> Gary Tui, that was. And it's out the backs now with Pete Sheridan. Pete Sheridan, who was uh, one of the second grade uh, stars of last year, and he'd be hungry for a victory today after last year's defeat. Another one of the players that's uh, been there, done that. And Hampo, chip and chase, misses the tackle. And good good defence from uh, Gary Tui in particular with Gary Judge. That's Gary Judge again, and mud over the top. So we're still just inside the Hornsby Territory. Half break made. Gary Tui once again around the legs. He's having a good good game, Gary Tui. Just into the Castle Hill Territory, right on about that halfway line as we spin it across the Hornsby back line. Once again, Beaky and Co equal to the task and bringing them down about eight metres on the Castle Hill side of halfway. Now there's the kick, all on side. It's down to the legend, the legend Phil Host whose wife is still down there. <laughs> uh, which I hasten to add. Harrow getting involved with Gaddy, both wingers on the one side of the field, Mick. It's, uh, it's unfamiliar in uh, rugby league, but uh, especially with Harrow. Harrow, the one who's gone the long distance, and he's not the quickest man going around. Well, he's been uh, planning that move for the last 10 minutes, actually. He's gone over there in time, so it's a good effort. Right, comments from the super commentator. <laughs> Or super cameraman then. Gary Judge. Oh, free flying football. Gary too, he's in the clear. Gary's there. He's kicked it. That looks sweet. Oh, out in the full. Well, do you think perhaps we should have kept it on the hands, Mick? Or haven't you been able to see it through the camera? Well, everything's black and white to me. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you come, you pay two dollars to come and watch the football and you end up watching it on a shitty one inch by one inch black and white screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you get stuck with the mic in your hand too. But that's not such a bad thing. And defence good from college, Pete Sheridan. Well, Harrow there. Harrow's made that tackle. Quite often we'll see Harrow miss one and that sometimes results in a try, but he's gone on with it, Harrow. Silly football. Silly football. Tony Takunas, the referee for today's fixture, and he's not stupid. He won't get that one over him. He loves to blow that whistle. <coughs> so 
So Beaky with some heavy defence. And you're kidding, sir. You are kidding. You've got to be joking. They look pretty pretty well on side for mine, and the referee's pinged them all. I can't follow that one. And, in fact, he's given it to them directly in front of the post. What do you reckon about that one? Well, I mean, bugger if I know if they were offside because I didn't have them all in my field of view, uh, which, looking through a camera, you know, it's a little bit hard to uh, see the, what's going on in the game. So what can I say? Well, I'll let me tell you about it. Every one of them was onside behind the referee, and he somehow managed to pull off one fella, and he's picked the one who was directly in front of the post. Have we seen anyone for a beer? I don't think we have seen anyone for a beer. We might have to call someone up. Uh, who we got down there? Just tell Don to get someone. Where is Dong? Imagine that, not being able to find Dong. <laughs> well, we're back with a kick now. Set. Taking a long time over it. Moves in. Oh, that's a shocker. An absolute shocker. So the score remains 6 2 in favour of Hornsby Tech. And it'll be back to the centre of the uh, quarter well, And he's Mish to pray with us. And he's got a uh, steak sandwich, he's got one can of beer, and he's forgotten about his mates. Go on, Mish. Go on. How about a couple of beers for the fellas? What do they call him? Highwayman or something, don't they? He's had his hair perm, that Blake, during the off-season. We're on the uh, Castle Hill quarter. It's out along the Hornsby backs. They're very quick backs too, slick. <laughs> Gary George bumped off in uncustomary uh, position there for Gary George to be knocked flat on his back. And there's Mrs. Host down there too. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the kids. That's lovely. <laughs> well, there's the grubber, and oh, a heavy hit, heavy hit. Oh, phew. you could feel it. Here's Harrow. Harrow steals 15. It's gone. <laughs> Pete Fitzsimons running it up. Here's Hampo working with a, uh, with a with a big blind. Dicky Butler finds Beaky. Beaky stepping, jinking. Beaky right through, right through. Steps again, looks for support. Dicky Butler, Hampo. That's a great try. That is a great try. Put that down to Beaky. Beaky jinked. He stepped. He went right through. Drew the fullback, found Dicky Butler and on to Hampo, and that's a magnificent try to equalise six all, and a kick to come. What about that one, Mick? Was that great football or what? That was all Beaky. Uh, sorry, mate, I missed all of that on the camera, mate. I, I was actually filming the touch judge. Sorry about that. <laughs> Not a problem. Mish, did you see it? Great try, great try. That was Rugby League's winner. It's a fickle game, Rugby League. As John Stolinovich once said, on the 27th of August at this very oval in 1988. So Dave Fletcher's got this one lined up. It's been a difficult day for goal kickers, Mick. Um, we've got Mish. Mish has taken over the camera here. While well, we have this break in play. Mick, I was just saying. Um, Just saying, difficult day for goal kickers. Bit uh, of a yeah, no, <laughs> bit of a breeze down there, blustery uh, breeze. If you zoom right in, it goes out of focus. Then you've got to zoom a little bit out. Of uh, no, mate, you know, you know, the controls thing. He's got it set, moves in. Hits it sweetly, but it's just gone away, sliced away to the right a little. Well, I mean, it's, it's not a good day for goal kickers, is it, Pete? It's not a good day at all. There's a breeze blowing down there. It, uh, it must be about, what do you reckon, about 30 knots, and coming out my arse at about 40. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, 
It's great action down there. Six all scoreline. I tell you what, I'd rather be out there with that win than in this commentary box with your win, Pete. That's all I'm saying. So who's this to kick off? Is it uh, Michael Bampton? The coach is kicking off. Indeed. Indeed. He oh, he is the captain coach. All right, fair enough. What a goo by him. And it goes back to, well, I thought it was going to be, oh, no, they're giving it, Gaddy. Gaddy. Good try, Gaddy. Try. This could be a try. That's try dangerous. And Gaddy, Gaddy's been brought down, but they've got the penalty. Yep, yep, that's been, that's been added to the rule book. Tackling uh, Gaddy is against the rules. It is against the rules. That's uh, clause 13, section A, part B. Right. So the penalty going for the tackle on Gaddy. And uh, that was against uh, young Shane Sheridan. And he's not one of the prettiest blokes going around, though, as I mentioned a bit earlier, he had his hair permed and uh, he's come back in 89 a much better player than he was in 88. One of the uglier men with uh, funny looking growth down the sides of his cheeks. He's not a pretty oh, sight. Well, this is bad for the game, isn't it? The ball goes out on the right hand side and the touch, the, the new ball has to come from the other side of the field. It's just not on, is it, in, in professional football, which, no, which this isn't. Not the go. This isn't professional football, but it's still not the go. And in a game where there's money involved, and uh, well, there must be. Surely they've got to buy the jerseys and shit. Oh. Oops, Sticky Butler managed to get out of what could have been a potential uh, shepherding. Now he's the man who set up that last try. He's he's proved a handful today uh, for the Hornsby defence, and another penalty going on with it again. There's no doubt at all, Terry Takun is having a good game at the moment. He's uh, picked up everything and he's picked it up correctly. It's uh, Terry Tunkinus. Is it? It is too. Last week you didn't have an in it. Actually, that's amazing. Terry Tunkinus. Uh, well, what's that, Dave Fletcher? Yeah, and he's that, he, that is <laughs> remarkable midfield bomb after the, uh, the penalty, penalty uh, kick. That's uh, Dave Daly, genius. I'll tell you what, he's a smart man, Dave Fletcher, because he knows that he's kicking for touch games pretty ordinary, uh, and occasionally he's lucky to make it. But what he's done on this occasion, rather than go for touch, he's put up the midfield bomb, hopeful to regather it and put the other team uh, right out of it. But uh, that's a good move. We saw a pretty, pretty woeful sort of kick from him earlier. Well, it's a rare genius. Rare genius, isn't it? I mean... He's, he's not too good looking either, really, is he? I mean, he's, he's got that moustache, which, you know, ugly guys think if they grow a moustache, they'll suddenly be good looking, but it doesn't work, does it? It doesn't, doesn't work, and he's, uh, he's carrying a, a few extra kilos. And uh, But I don't want to go on about it because he's a good man, Dave Fletcher. I do. I want to go on about it. He's fat. Well, I'll tell you, if you want to go on with something, mate, why don't we go on with Gary George? Hey, if you want to have a shot at someone, let's have a shot at him. <laughs> I'm not afraid to go on with this, mate, as there's a bloke in all sorts of trouble out there. He's, uh, he's done a heart leech or something by the looks of things. There's a few men out there. John McMahon, the legend's one of them. He knows what it's like to have an injury. As a replacement comes on, it's number 15. I think it's Chris O'Sullivan. 15, that's... Uh... It is Chris O'Sullivan? Chris O'Sullivan. Chris O'Sullivan, he'll be playing with Western Suburbs next year. Will he? No, Chris Hen O'Sullivan, Ivan Henjack. Well, anyhow, Chris O'Sullivan said that he would give Ivan Henjack a lift to the ground in ah. several of the matches. That's gone out, and that's a long kick. It's taken a long time to cross the touchline, and it was on Harrow's wing. Well, actually, it only took a split second to actually cross the touchline, you'll find, Peter. Right. Uh, from the moment left to about two. four or five nanoseconds. Oh, they're talking to Beaky, are they? Oh, comments from the super cameraman, Michelle Dupre. They're talking to Beaky. What do you think they're talking to him about, Pete? I'd say they're probably saying that, uh, Beaky, your older brother's here, and he's brought you, brought your lunch down. Or what he, what he came to the game without his lunch, did he? He came to the game oh. without his lunch. Um, and you'll find that there is a brown paper bag down in the dressing room, and there's a risky pass uh, with B on it for Beaky. Well, that's got to be good for the game, hasn't it? I just hope that... Uh, Marty Anderson! Marty Anderson! I just hope that uh, Dickie Butler doesn't get confused and actually eat Beaky's lunch. That'd be a shame, wouldn't it, for the game? I notice the crowd here aren't too happy about uh, the com commentary. And uh, that's probably because all the people around us are, in fact, on the losing side or are losing supporters, and that's why they don't like our commentary. But here's Phil Host, the legend. Phil Host chimes into the back line, and he's knocked down base over apex. And Phil Host's wife's down there too, by the way. He is down. She is. He is. He is down there, his wife. Yeah, and, uh, every now and then we get an opportunity just to have a bit of a look down there when there's not much excitement on. In fact, most of the time we've been looking down there. Whether there's been much happening or not. Well, that was an interesting kick from uh, College. That was the uh, sideways kick for touch, directly sideways. Uh, interesting tactic. 
very interesting tactic. Um, probably had something to do with Fletch. Not being a good kicker. Not yeah. yeah. But it's out the uh, back line of Hornsby Tech. And, uh, Hornsby Tech, who last year finished last in the first grade premiership. Did you know that, Mick? Well, it's got to be the jerseys, hasn't it? It's got to be the jerseys. From the shitty looking old Balmain things to the new Canberra ones. Which uh, look shittier, but... Uh, they look shittier, but they're new. And uh, they're clean, at least. And probably next year we'll see them wearing some other colours. Well, I tell you what, Phil Carey got the ball out there, but as usual, he knocks it on. Now, here comes Fletch. He didn't, he didn't opt for the kick there. Was it a bad decision? It probably was in Fletcher's case. He didn't make much ground. Although, mind you, his kicking game has been a bit off today. And I think he's got his head down. We'll have a look at him. He's got his head down. He's looking around a bit of a daze. I'll tell you what, when he puts his head down, he wouldn't be even be able to see his shoelaces, mate, with that bloody gut. You're not wrong there. Not wrong at all. Ooh, and, that was a bit uh, high. That's interesting. Hampo's picked up the dregs. He's also copped a pretty heavy tackle. Gary Tui now. Running it out. Gary Tui's had a good game. He had a good game last well, a couple of weeks there ago against uh, Uni New South Wales. Thought he was particularly good on that occasion. And he's holding down his position well since um, since a couple of weeks ago. Well, since early in the season when uh, Castle unfortunately uh, uh, lost one of their living star, legends, living legend star players, uh, Paul Donkin. Paul Donkin. That's right, yeah. Paul Donkin. <laughs> Whom uh, they were trying to blood blood for the first grade 5-8 and there's the Cowling family down front there. Just Cowling getting us away. That's uh, Molly and uh, no. Jim. Jim Cowling and uh, Molly Cowling. No, actually, no, it's Molly <laughs> Bowd, isn't it? Mary it's Cowling, Molly so. Bowd and here comes Jeff now. He had a big Dave game. Fletcher! Jeff, oh sorry, we're back to the game and uh, Fitzsimons makes a good 10 yards on. Oh, there's a penalty. Penalty. I'll give us a chance to remark man. and uh, chance for Harrow to settle down now and think about what's going on out there. He's got his mind on blatantly on water skiing or something at the moment. Fletch finds touch, somehow manages to get it over the touch line and make ground. I think you'll find Jeff Cowling has been involved playing for, th in the last three teams he's played for, he's won every premiership. Is that correct, Jeff? That's correct. So why give me the mic to answer Jeff's questions? <laughs> because Jeff was too far away. Right, fair enough. We're back to the league action with Four out of Beaky. That'd be under 10s. Nines, tens, thirteens. Nines, tens, C grade, third grade and second grade, Jeff Cowling premierships. Did I stuff up, Jeff? What did I get wrong? Uh, I didn't win all those years. <laughs> oh, he didn't win all those years. But he did play all those years. Well, here's Fletch with a gift too. Although it is Fletch kicking and nothing's really a gift. Uh, this is a difficult one for Fletch because he's uh, a good... 15 yards out and five yards off to the noticed. side of the post, so that's that's going to be tough. I noticed that um, when the referee actually awarded the penalty, some of the Hornsby fellas were pretty pissed off because they knew it was a chance for two points, and then uh, there was applause and a few looks of smiles as soon as Fletch took the ball to have the shot. Well, actually, half of the college team um, looked a bit disappointed when the penalty was given because they knew that uh, Fletch was going to be given the ball, which, well, you know, I mean, well, at least... He might kick it dead, and they might get the ball back from the dropout. Oh, I don't count on him, mate. He couldn't kick it. Couldn't kick it out of sight down a dark alley. <laughs> Let's see how he goes with this. Oh dear, our cameraman's adjusting the tripod. So, Jeff uh, Cowling, we've got him here with us. Uh, what do you think won it for you today? Was it the uh, rampaging forwards? I don't know, mate, just pure heart. Oh, well, well, Peter Bowd, I don't know if you heard him call, but he called that kick would go to the left, and, you know, what can, what can we say? It went to the right. No, it didn't. It went to the left, and uh, what a genius. And, and Fletch, oh, boy. He's laughing, mate. He's, Fletch is laughing down there saying, oh, I knew I'd miss it. Oh, mate, he's still smiling. Well, at least someone's laughing about it, eh? Well, that's a damn good that's dropout. Well, that's, uh, that's, well, that's not that good. That's only gone the 95 yards. No, I beg your pardon, it's not 20, less 22, so that's about 77 in the yards. Well, that's not very good, is it? So 73, actually. 73 yard dropout. The run around with Pete Sheridan, Pete Sheridan brings it up the middle. Pete Sheridan plays like an extra forward, sometimes. Well, he does. It's a shame he doesn't play like a back every now and again. <laughs> Speaking of backs, there's a good one there. 
Yeah, Mrs. Hayes is down there. Mrs. Hayes, that's the one I was thinking of. Good back and a good front too to match. Tell you what, that Phil Host, one lucky fella, he's going to get out there and whether win, lose or draw, he's still got that to go home to. Well, I mean, look at that down there, back to the football. Uh, well, I mean, you've got to, in a grand final, possession is nine tenths of the law. Well, it's ten, <laughs> it's ten tenths of the law, isn't it? <laughs> and, and Peter Fitzsimons had no respect for it there, and if you've got no respect for the law, well, you deserve to be punished. That's right, with a scrum. Right, and one that you lose. Yes. giving the opposition opportunity to be on the attack and that's just what Hornsby are at this moment as Mudd comes in with a big crash tackle Marty Anderson involved there we haven't seen much from Marty Anderson yet it's early days I know but he is an international and uh, he's got a reputation to live up to and a receding hairline as well <laughs> and three oh well that was forward oh forward. Sir. under the uh, the mountain man well we're about we're about 300 yards we're about 300 yards away here and we saw that forward now the ref was about 10 yards away I mean why couldn't he see it He's blind, mate. Doesn't oh. want to see it. Doesn't want to see him. You notice he gives his penalties within kicking range, so he knows Fletch will take the shot and uh, miss the goal. What's and that? Then we see uh, clearance kicks from uh, from the Hornsby Tech, so it's pretty obvious what is being going on out there. And Tony Tunkinus, Tunkinus he is this week. He was to Kunis last week. He's Tunkinus this week. Um, he's he's, uh, he's reading the game well. And there's Harrow, another man who occasionally reads the game well. Beaky. Here they go, Garjorj, Garjorj, who has a uh, jiffy van, and uh, that ball's gone to ground. Well, what do I say about possession? I mean, they're just ten, not respecting ten, 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 ten tenths of the law. Well, let's just say ten, because that's what it is. It's a big day for rugby league, and it's six all in the main game. We just have a uh, crowd check from our statistician. Yep, there's a lot of people here. But Thank it's you. starting to clear a little in front of us. Uh, that's uh, a lot of those Union New South Wales people have now left and not been replaced by the Hornsby Tech. They've, uh, they've left this area pretty vacant. And uh, there are a few Hornsby supporters, don't get me wrong, but a uh, huge number of Castle Hill supporters down there. Absolutely huge. Hornsby now with an opportunity. They're on the uh, college, just outside the college quarter. And had to send the winger to go and get the ball, which I always thinks a, a bit of bad luck. Well, I mean, this is game. this is first grade football, and they've got to send the winger to get the ball. I mean, I know he doesn't have many other duties, but but gee, come on, hurdling uh, fences is not one of his duties. I wonder what that fellow, what's his name, is it Sean? Sean uh, Aussie tracksuit. Uh, I wonder what he was doing then, because it was a fine opportunity for him to kick the ball on from this side. <laughs> but uh, he just stayed sitting there with his skinny wife. <laughs> Yes, uh, Peter Bowd, straight to the point commentator, hard and unfair. Uh, Anna, I think your name is Anna. Anna Rexic. An Anna Fair. <laughs> no, I mean Anna Rexic. Back to the game, they're about half a yard out and a big man powers oh, over the top. That's, the that's Nick Munro. Nick Munro, doesn't he host 60 minutes? Uh, he does. There's a field goal attempt, which has gone astray. Well, I mean, they're, they're not Daniel Andersons out there, are they? No, no, no. no. Mud's pretty close. Mud's as close as you'll get. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd say Mud's looks probably with Gaddy's pace. <laughs> and uh, that's a Daniel Anderson for mine. Yeah, Daniel's saying, uh, can we come? Should we get the This is before he got out. Well, we all, we all gave it to Daniel. Yeah, we said Pete McCallum was a whisker behind. But he was just saying, before the game, being his bottom self. Injury to Pete Fitzsimons. He's getting some taping put on that by the legend um, Johnny McMartin. Well, our cameraman, uh, back to the game. Thank you, cameraman. And, uh, well, look Beaky. at that. Beaky, he's up to centre. He's, he's virtually unstoppable. I wouldn't call him unstoppable. Virtually is a good choice. And there's the feral kid again down there, running around with that ball and his boomerang. <laughs> oh, Marty oh, Anderson. Well, I mean, we heard that from here, and we're at least, what, 15 foot away? At least. Easy. Hampo. Bad kick, Hampo. Well, I think we've seen two of the worst chip kicks in rugby league history here today. I think the Hornsby chip kick, which went about three foot, was worse than that. Yeah, yeah, it was. And Hampo looking to make amends now with some good defence. Usually uh, hangs around behind uh, and picks up the dregs or anything that manages to get through. But today, he's got right up there in the front, Hampo. Now he's drifted back a bit. Dave Fletcher, he'll probably think about running up very shortly in the line. 
Well, a positional switch is it? Dave Fletcher to the centre, by the looks of things. It looks in like defence. Dave playing centre. He's he's doing about the defence of a fullback. He's there. He's had a good grab at that bloke's jumper. Oh, and he had a little, little second grab there too. That's two grabs down for Dave. Well, he, well, put him down for that tackle. The guy was lying down. There was no one on him, so Dave said, "Here's a chance to get a tackle up," and he's actually registered one now. Oh, close oh. thing, close thing. Phil Host is safe as half a bank, isn't he? He's safe. He's safe, all right, uh, Hosty. Uh, the experience it was there wasn't a case of him being a good fullback. It was just the experience he knew where to be at the right time. That was well, a nice and he got there in the whisker time, didn't he? Well, He's going from one end of the field to the other. Here comes Fletcher again. No, Hosty's taken over. Hosty's taken over. Well, that's not exactly a uh, dramatic improvement, is it? No, it's not. Would you call it an improvement? Well, well, yeah, yes. Yes. Yes, good I'd kick. call that an improvement. Very good kick yes, indeed. Good kick. Great kick. Tactic, tactically uh, superb. Yep. And yep. executed uh, brilliantly. Well, as well as you could ask. They'll get the scrum feed. They'll get the win. And uh, I think you'll see Hampo run himself the open. And uh, dummy and score. Well, let's hope. Well, it's screwed around a bit. In fact, I'm totally wrong. It's come out the Hornsby side, and it was the Hornsby half. Who dummy? I knew it was going to be one of them. Oh dear. Oh dear, they've blown it. Knock on, this will be a scrum, surely. Gaddy's got it, open spaces almost. Quickly close on him. Okay, a bit of a settling down period now for the f college team and for the commentary team. Yeah, I just noticed, listen to the crowd here. Uh, pretty getting a bit vocal now, and there's a lot of Macquarie sir, uh, players here, and they seem to be. Um... Well, well, here's a chance for Harrow, but he didn't have the pace. That's surprising, Peter. Yeah, for a winger, it's surprising. I was going <laughs> to say that um, they seem to be treating college as the bad boys of rugby league today. I guess that's the, the that's the price you pay for having three sides in and uh, being well, lately a good. that's right, mate. Player. I mean, winners, winners, winners are grinners and uh, losers can please themselves. As a, right. oh, I think that was uh, the great Paul Donkin. Uh, it's quoted that as coined that phrase. Thank you, thank you, Peter. Marty Anderson, good tackle. Now, uh, Islander. Oh, gee, he's ugly, isn't he? He's really <laughs> ugly. And that's a pretty ordinary pass with six to go, and then they throw it to Gaddy, who's been thrown over the sideline. I mean, I've known some ugly guys in my time. For instance, uh, you were you. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. You're, you're rather ugly, but I mean, that Highlander out there, I mean, he, he's, he's right I, up there. I'm a model, mate, with him. I'm a model oh, with him. Yeah, you're man. a model compared to him. A model dickhead. <laughs> hey, 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 young, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and that looked like Gary George. Well, I tell you what, uh, Hornsby, I was going to say they've got the numbers out here, but they haven't really. It's just three, three, three each. So uh, I'll take that back because I'm... I'm out of pick me nose, mate. OK, mate. Well, I'll, I'll keep the commentary going here. Who is this? This? Oh, jeez, you I didn't have to it, flick it on me after you picked it. Well, he goes, oh, God, he's, he's wiping it on me now. Well, this is back. That's going to go dead, isn't it? They, they haven't allowed for the wind. Haven't allowed for the wind, Peter? No. No, no idea. They haven't... Uh... Well, have they got, what's the story with the breeze at the moment? It seems to be turning around, going all roads. Well, it is, but it's still averaging about 15 knots uh, in Hornsby's favour. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Hornsby haven't allowed for the fact that we've got a, a, quite a big wind and the ground, it's pretty hard out there. It's, isn't a, it? it's a four point breeze. And about a six point uh, ground for the hardness. Yeah, yeah. They've got to be 10 up Hornsby at the break, or they're, they're gone. Oh, they're yeah. not 10 up, mate, they're gone. 10 up for mine. I'll tell you now, I'll say it right now, that if Hornsby aren't 10 up at half time, College will win by 12. Ah, oh, 14. 14 by mine. If College, if uh, Hornsby uh, aren't up by 14, halfway through the second half, uh, then I'm predicting that uh, Castle Hill might win the game. Right. Fletch, again. Well, uh, I mean... Words, you don't need, really need to express uh, any emotions at this stage. It's just quite obvious. I mean, he is a horrendous kicker. Yep. There's a forward pass. I uh, noticed uncharacteristically of Fletch, he made the tackle around his legs, around the Blake's legs. Wasn't going for the old slap on the back saying, oh, bad luck, I missed Dave will think I made an effort. <laughs> well... And, uh, 
I'm not surprised he's retired at the end of this season. But I don't want to bag a guy. And uh, he's doing his best out there. There's 12 no, other fellas uh, out there who can best bag him. just ain't good enough, really, no, isn't not. it? <laughs> well, last week it was nobody would talk to Harrow. This week I haven't noticed anyone talking to Fletch. <laughs> Oh, they're in the national world, you know, just showing his class there. Martin Anderson throws, throws the dump, and, and yes, the guy did get dumped. So brilliant. <laughs> well called from Marty Anderson. Here's uh, Fitz with the hand now heavily taped. Gary George moves into dummy half and says, fuck it, I've got nowhere to go, so I'll get rid of it. And well, Gaddy! Oh dear. Marty Anderson, he's an international, but he's proven he's only human. Well, nothing wrong with that pass as far as I was concerned. Uh, Marty Anderson, well, he's come back with a big head. It's reminiscent of uh, John Muggleton, 82-83 Kangaroo Tour. Uh, went away, became a hero, came back for Parramatta and played reserve grade for the next eight years. <laughs> that's him, that's him. I uh, hope Marty enjoys his last game in first grade today. Thinning on top. Well, I tell you what, if uh, Fletch keeps up this kicking game, he's not going to enjoy it, is he? He's not at all, and... Uh, there's a couple of blokes out there that are really living on memories of when they were good players. I think you know who I'm talking about. I don't have to mention Marty Anderson and Dave Fletcher. Well, I was going to say, was Dave Fletcher ever a good player? <laughs> I think so. I, I, he's, there's a photo of him at college, I think. Um, I could be wrong. There's a photo of him at college, so therefore he's a good footballer? Well, he, they won a premiership, I think. Or well, maybe I'm wrong. Anyhow, who cares? That it's blatantly that if he was a good footballer, he's not anymore. <laughs> I tell you what, well, Paul Donkin. I don't want to bag a bloke. <laughs> no way. I don't want to bag him either, but geez, he's hopeless. He's, uh, <laughs> here's Marty Anderson, the other 1990 reserve grader, <laughs> ex international. You reckon he'll make <laughs> reserve grade next year then, uh, Martin Anderson? Actually, third grader. Third grader. Second grade one. He's a third grader, Marty Anderson. There's half time, but it's not over yet. Well, this could go on for 10 minutes. Oh, well, that was oh, forward. I won't give a penalty. Let's have a, let's have a Tosca. Well, that's well done by the ref. I mean, that's the correct ruling there. College oh, will win by 12. God, look at, win by look 12. at the bum on that touch judge. Horribod oh, himself. That he, that, that, actually, he was. He came first in the Mr. Mr. Universe Horobod contest. Well, I can't understand why Dave Fletcher wouldn't be uh, smiling. I mean, he should be fairly happy with his game, Pete. Yep, yep, or maybe he knows the racing he's going to get when he gets inside. And uh, I think Castle are pretty lucky that they're going in at 6 all. They've been ordinary, but they haven't, you know, they've, they've, we've seen patches of good play. Beaky's having a good one. And uh, Gary George, oh, look at Mrs. Host. But uh, can, we get, can we get a look at that, Mish? Oh, stop, yeah, Mish, stop. It's back on, Mish. Right, well, we're back for the second half and what's going to be the last 40 minutes of the 1989 Rugby League season. During the break, we a uh, special mention was given to uh, Phil Host. Phil Host playing his 206th game for uh, the college today. And um, <laughs> extraordinary scenes, Mick, because the uh, bloke who made the announcement uh, actually said Phil Host played 206 games and he'll probably play a couple hundred more. And the, the whole of the... Uh, crowd here today all went I hope not all up together so it was uh, extraordinary scenes and uh, Phil Hayes. Does mean they wanting to play more than a couple of hundred more well, mate? I think he oh. could be right there and I'd, I'll tell you what I wouldn't mind him getting more actively involved with the football club because when he's more actively involved with the football club he's spending less time at home you know what I mean and, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and there's his missus down there too but we'll get off that for a while because we've really flogged that to death but who cares yeah, it's nice. a chance to get back at Hasty. Back on a day Fletcher. <laughs> No, well, well, this is a good move. They're getting kick someone else to kick it. He looks a bit like Gary Schofield, doesn't he? He does look like Gary Schofield, except with a bit darker skin. And uh, different sort of looking head. Yeah, and uh, not quite as big. And yeah. uh, actually looks nothing like Gary Schofield. But he no. does look a bit like Dave Fletcher, <laughs> without a gut. <laughs> And I, I think with the last 40 minutes, Mick, well, we're into probably something like 38 to go now. We're, we've got to take this opportunity and probably give everybody a cane, an absolute cane. And, absolute uh, cane. Let's start off with Peter Baird. Let's not. Okay. Let's not okay. start with legends. <laughs> well, we, so we've got to pick someone non-legendary. How about uh, Dave Fletcher? How about Dave? <laughs> we haven't mentioned him all much today, Dave. And uh, Well, he's had a shocker. Well, where is he? There he is. 
Well, he, he thought of that, getting his tackle count up. He saw the knock on and the guy dive on, he thought, oh, I could get a tackle here. <laughs> but then he thought, no, why bother making the effort? Well, you know, I've, I've said it before. Actually, I've never said it before. I'm going to say it now. The statistics don't win grand finals. And guys going out there to pick up their tackle count, that doesn't get you any good. It doesn't get you anywhere at all. And I'll, I'll just quietly, and I'm going to have to tell Dave this on the sly a bit later, but nobody keeps the tackle counts. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> so we can forget about that uh, aspect of his game because he looks bad when he does it. Let's not forget... There's Gary George. Gary George playing on the wing this half. Let's not forget, Peter, that Dave Daly is a mental giant. He's a veritable human walking computer and he keeps the stats in his head. Don't you tell me he doesn't know each and every well, tackle that each player's done out there. You're right there, but his trouble for college. Gary George is down. I'm wondering if that's a bad thing or a good thing. <laughs> well, it'd be better if Fletch was down. Probably would be better if Fletch is down. <laughs> well, we've had uh, a guy there from Mish to say stop bagging. Stop right? bagging. A chance to get on to Hampo. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Well, Hambo's yeah, been bagging so many hips. girls, I'm surprised he's got time for football. Well, I know, he's been bagging a few, and uh, he hasn't necessarily bagged any real good ones, but anyhow, <laughs> each to his own. Been there, been there, done that, you might say. And uh, Hampo, hands on, he's blatantly got his mind on something else. <laughs> You'll be getting more than his mind on it later, mate. Well, if it's anything like last year, uh, if you arrive with a girl, you don't necessarily go home with her. As like Trev Finn would know. <laughs> As Trev <laughs> Fenn would know. What was that? I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> As Trev Fenn would know. Thank you. And now back to the game. Well, here's a big great from the centre. And oh, and he's right over Gaddy. Gaddy not known for his big defensive game. Well, Martin oh, Anderson, yeah, the international. Oh! Oh, it's a try. You can't help but not get excited about that try. Oh, fucking hope you can. Hang on. He's disallowed it, has he? It's not on. He's disallowed it, Pete. No try. No, no try. try. Well, no it's still try. six all here. Take no notice of the touch judge. The touch judge has got it wrong. It's disallowed. Well, college will take the uh, 22 taffy here, but, uh, well, Hornsby don't want a bar of it. This will be controversial. It's interesting because Hornsby are going all the way back. <laughs> Well, the crowd really getting into it there. The score is 10-6. 10-6 to Hornsby with a kick to come and that crucial five minutes, that crucial early five minutes in the second half. Ah, uh, well, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Pete, that crucial 40 minutes before and after half time. If you don't dominate the game during that period, you just can't win football matches. You can't, mate, you can't. And uh, we've seen on, well, two of the three games today, college have been scored against in that crucial opening five minutes of the second half. And on the only occasion that they weren't, they won the game. So I don't know what that says. Maybe you can Not much, probably, maybe Pete. Uh, some statistical inference from that says that that's probably totally irrelevant. Probably, probably. Anyhow, right in front, but that's no guarantee you'll kick it as Kel Overton will tell you. <laughs> or Dave Fletcher. Or Dave Fletcher, for that matter. <laughs> well, it hasn't but, been uh, a kicker's dream I'd know if today. I was Hornsby, if I was, rather, if I was college, I'd be, I'd be saying to Hornsby, well, I'll tell you what, we'll offer our goal kicker services for you. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy, mate. I know that um, Dave Fletcher gets <laughs> gets kicks occasionally from in front, and uh, we often comment on things like, well, he could throw it over from there, but of course, if you throw it over, you don't get any points for it. But in Fletcher's case, even when he kicks it, you don't get any points for it. So, I don't know what's the difference. <laughs> well, John McMartin down there, living, uh, le living legend. legend. John Is that what you call from him? the Cronulla Club. Parramatta. And Parramatta. and Parramatta formally, but I mean it's where we where we get our players from now. The counts, <laughs> and we get them all from Cronulla. What's that? <laughs> no, you did. Not while I was here, anyway. You might have been first up. Ah, uh, just the usual. Well, I just noticed Tampa pointing up to the crowd, and he said something like, um, "See that girl in the second row? I fucked her." So, <laughs> <laughs> see what he actually said was, "See that second row? I fucked them." All oh, right. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Now uh, this this has to go. Uh, this this uh, broadcast is being telecast over uh, daytime television, uh, where there'll be thousands of young children uh, watching this. Well, he's got the two. Wow, well, crucial two. I don't think we're going to get hail this year, unlike last year. I tell you what, we need hail to save Castle Hill at this stage because things aren't looking too good. Carved right up the centre there. 
We haven't got, um, I'll tell you the problem, mate. We haven't got too many Paramaris boys, unlike the second grade side. And I, um, I can only identify two from here. They're Pete Fitzsimons and uh, Mark Harrington. Well, that's the only two I've got, and I think and you're you think right. About it, you've got about probably a little over one footballer there between them. <laughs> Fitzsimons making up about one footballer. <laughs> and, uh, well, I'm, I'm being generous to Harrow, really. I'm being generous. Benny out. Back to the, back to the league action as Harrow made that tackle. Harrow's a doondacker. Just Harrow. Fitzsimons a, a Newman. Who cares? Anyhow, as uh, Hornsby are uh, working the ball out from their own 22... Well, that was uh, McQueen. And that was Harrow who made the tackle. Dickie Butler, uh, he's hanging around there. Here comes the, uh, what would we call him again? Uh, Highlander, and, and that was a Highlander, big run from Highlander. Whoa, well, Fletcher, Fletcher went for the Fletcher intercept. Went for the intercept, as the usual. Point? The arms are sticking out there, but there's not much use for the shoulder. He's not exactly going to stream away for the try if he gets the intercept, is he, Peter? No, he's not. In fact, he'll probably pull up short. Whoa, well, <laughs> a little bit of handball there from Sheridan. Well, that's asking confusion. a bit much of Gaddy. And once again, we see the old classic situation. A lot of players involved. The ball bouncing around. I'll pack down the scrum, says the ref. I mean, Gaddy's, you know, a pretty good footballer. I mean, he's he's fast. He's got good hands. He can tackle. He can kick. But, I mean, you can't expect him to handle the ball in that sort of situation. No, you can't. And there's Gary George down there making the tackle. And it uh, just brings to mind another bloke by the name of Pete Sheridan. Pete, Pete Sheridan. Sheridan. He's had a quiet game today, and he hasn't got much hair either. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit quiet about his loss of hair, actually. Yeah, I know. What was that, Mish? Uh, oh, well. You know, I haven't lost my... Uh, perhaps Dave Fletcher's lost his wallet and he might have to leave the field to pick it up. I'll just wipe that spit off your face. Thanks very much. On. Thanks very much, Mick. Well, I tell you what, they've got numbers out here. Oh, I tell you what, this is dangerous. It's host. Hosty. Dangerous He steps. <laughs> And, uh, we're, well, I'm just noticing the angle that we're actually looking at the game. We can't help but notice Mrs. Host sitting down there. <laughs> well, she's down there and she's having a good time. And speaking of hosts, uh, Phil Host will be hosting the uh, post-game function. Will he? Well, well, if that's the case, um, I think he hosted it last year too. He did. Phil Host did host it last year. Yeah, well, that explains it, why he had such a good time. So it's Fletcher for the kick. Oh, well, he's been pretty safe about that. That could land on the grandstand roof. It did. Well, well, we didn't hear it, but it was close enough. That was a huge kick from Fletch. He didn't make much ground as usual, but you've got to take the good with the bad. Here's Fitzsimons. Well, he ran that up hard. We've got uh, probably something like 11 and a half good footballers out there and Fletch and Harrow. <laughs> Making up the other one and a half. Well, I don't know. I reckon Fletch is worth the weight of two footballers. Well, you make up your own mind, Mick. You make up your own mind. You're supposed to say he is the weight of two footballers. He's a comfortable weight of two or three footballers, mate. I don't know, but uh, fair dinkum. There wasn't much in it, but it's, it doesn't have to be much in it to go out on the full. He's worth his weight in dirt, Fletch. Oh, which in his case is a fair, that's a fair, fair amount of dirt. Of dirt. <laughs> that's quite a bit of dirt. It's worth a fair bit. And, uh, yeah. and I was just noticing that kick from Fletch was one of the few ones he managed to find touch on the full with. Anyhow... I think we understand the uh, situation out there. He must be carrying an injury. Well, he's out there, mate, and we're up here in a commentary stand, so yeah, that gives right. us a perfect opportunity to put some more shit on him, doesn't and it? And to comment, and I noticed down there, there's um, a fellow that, um, in fact, there's two of them down there, a couple of teachers from Gilroy. Doesn't mean anything to anyone else. Chris Page, Jenny Bridge, she's really ugly, but Chris Page is a nice fella. And uh, that's OK, too. Anyway. And back to the football. Uh, so this... Well, here apparently this is a living legend of Hornsby football. Uh, can we get a name check? Uh, I think it's Ernie Dingo, mate. Ernie Dingo. <laughs> oh, gee, could be risky. Okay, but that's no, what we'll call they're, him. They're all they're uni New South Wales. Are they? All right. Well, it's Ernie Dingo uh, coming out on the field, and I remember him. He's mean, he's hard, he's a mean, but he's lean skinny. Lean, fighting machine, <laughs> mate. Lean, mean, fighting machine. Lean, mean, green, fighting fight machine. machine. College working it out now. Occasionally, we even get to comment on the football sometimes here. Bernie Dingo stretching up on the sideline. You're going to get a look at him very, very shortly. Well, here's Fletcher with a oh. kick. Oh. 
Oh, so, well. Oh, well. How the hell he got her over uh, that? The ref, Tunkin, is Terry Tunkin. He's, he's a, a fair kick. man. He felt sorry a for him. kick in the end, and it was from Phil Host, the legend. Dave Fletcher, he's had a disappointing game. I know we sometimes like to uh, have a bit of a shot at a guy and then we often bring on his good points, but I can't find any with Dave Fletcher today. Well, uh, uh, no, no, I can't think of any at this stage. But, no. but I mean, there's some time to go and there's time for him to pick up his game. A lot of, lot of uh, football left in this game. And uh, there's only six points as the um, Highlander runs it up. Well, he did a tackle there, uh, right around the legs. Beautiful copybook style. Mate, the guy was falling over. <laughs> he was on his way down anyhow. Uh, yeah. You're probably right. You're probably right. <coughs> Comments from the Super Burper. <laughs> well, smile. here's Gaps up the centre. Well, this will go to Hosty, will it? Oh, well, knocks on every... Oh, Messi, Messi. He's given it to college. Yep, yep. And who was that? Who was that with the ball? It, wa it wasn't. Gary Tui, mate. Uh, I was hoping it was going to be Dave Fletcher. Wasn't, wasn't Dave Fletcher. You won't find him where the action is. Had to be. Had to be. Now, I rue this. It's in the middle of the field. Fletcher's probably going to take a kick for touch. Which I think means, it would be safer if he just went for a goal. Well, it means if you're around oh, no, about... If you're around about the centre of the field, I wouldn't mind, but the Highlanders got confused out there. He doesn't know what's going on. Well, Fitzsimons, that was probably a good uh, good move from Fitzsimons. He, he got the ball, uh, didn't let Fletcher have the ball, and he, he took his own style of midfield well, to ball. To be honest, I reckon if Fletcher had a serious attempt to touch, it wouldn't have gone much further than what Fitz got <laughs> anyhow. Well, I tell you what, a bit of disorganisation out here, isn't there? Yeah, he's one of those fellas that will go all day for you. Manny will go all night if he'll you ask him. He'll go all night if, 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 if one of your mate's girlfriends are there, he'll go all night for you. No <laughs> worries at all. But, uh, the only well, he's good like that. I what? mean, you know, if, if you, you're busy, you're, you're out with the fellas, you know, and yet you haven't got the time to take your girlfriend out yeah. on any particular night, well, he's or, good like that. Or if you're overseas, even. Well, if, if you've gone overseas and uh, you'll look after your girlfriend. I think that the part of uh, Hampo's game which is lacking as we see a changeover in uh, mid-play, pretty piss-poor effort that. Uh, the part of Hampo's play that's lacking is the fact that he doesn't often buy flowers for the girl when he takes her out for the Chinese. Certainly not cover defence because that was a beautiful tackle from oh, no, uh, Stephen there. Oh, and Still he's involved in it. followed it up. I'll tell you what, a bloke, Dave Fletcher, we haven't had much to say about him. He's had a quiet one today. And the Highlanders oh, struggling to run. Somebody dropped their guts and it stinks. Fletcher's, Fletcher's two tackles in a row. That's, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great player, isn't he? He Pete? is a great player, and I think he might be using his gut out there a little bit more to advantage. Oh, I no, not the gut. I noticed that uh, the first tackle he made, the guy actually tripped over his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> And on, on he comes, Ernie Dingo, the Highlander off Ernie Dingo on. Uh, Ernie Dingo, a living legend of uh, tertiary football. Would that be a correct assumption, He Peter? must be, the way this crowd's erupted here today. And he's playing prop. He's, uh, he's uh, one of the world's skinniest men. I think Paul Donkin would agree. He's, uh, he's certainly not up there in the Dave Fletcher mould of uh, no, prop. No, 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 no way. But he goes again, at, when you look at Dave Fletcher, he makes Donk look skinny, doesn't he, really? <laughs> and he makes Donk look fit. <laughs> and speaking of fit, there's Gary George. As hard oh, is that as thick? <laughs> as hard as nails. One of the nice guys of rugby league, Gary. And there's another one there, there's Marty Anderson. So often Marty does a shit kick, but somehow manages to come up with the goods. He hasn't on this occasion. And that's rare, but it had to be a penalty. Well, I mean, that's that international touch with Martin Anderson. I mean, he's just got that add, added bit of flair about him, hasn't he? Yeah, the blokes out there today that uh, had had quiet games, and I think really they've been the backbone uh, more than having a quiet game. They just haven't really shone out. Fellas like uh, Dickie Butler. Dickie, Dickie who? Dickie Butler. He's out there, is he? He's out there. And, um, or Dave Chawella. But, oh, Dave Fletcher, big hit on Ernie Dingo. I saw it. And then he shook hands with the next bloke when he ran past him. Oh, look, Ernie Dingo, he's keen, isn't he? He's going to take, up, he's going to take the ball up again. And another fellow who's had a... Well, Mud, Mud, Craig Hassel. He's had a good game, good, strong, solid skipper's game. And, uh, you well, know... I don't know, I don't know. Any skipper who keeps giving the ball to Fletch to do the kicks, mate, that couldn't be too good a decision. Well, I, I, you have got to question the fellow's captaincy, but I did notice that somehow Fitz managed to get the last kick, so... Obviously, something's gone, come through with, uh, with Mud. He knows the, the story out there. Well, I 
tell you, there, there's, there's the seven point margin, Pete. Seven point margin, shades of second grade, shades of second grade. It wasn't Daniel Anderson on this occasion. And uh, college seven down now. I hope they don't toss it in from here because they're a better football team than that. Well, they are. Not much better, but they are better. Well, mate, I think we're getting a bit, a bit cruel here. We've got we've to we've think about it. No, they're, you're a, they're a team of champions. Team of champions. Champion team. Champion team. Fletcher's got the ball in his hand. He'll come back strong from that. And that's a good deep kick. Very good kick. Well, that's a lot better from Fletcher, isn't it? Obviously, the pressure's starting to get to a few of the players. Hornsby with that seven-point break. All-important seven-point break, 13-6. And uh, the contrament ease with it that Blake managed to pot that field goal. Oh, contrament ease. With contrament ease, which, which you pronounce that word, Peter. Thanks very much. I took a long time. I thought about it hard before I said the word and managed to come out right. And uh, college now, they don't want to do anything silly here. They want to just play football and try and get that six-pointer, which they need. Actually, I felt your, your enunciation of the word was uh, fabulous. Oh, ta, ta. And, and even to be able to say enunciation so well is, is, is uh, really a, um, well, a, 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 is it a, uh, is it a, um, uh, a, a commendation? <laughs> a commendation on your ability to enunciate. Well, thank you, Peter. I appreciate your uh, commendation of my enunciation. Um, it's really uh, more of an instantiation of uh, basically my whole uh, vocal attitude to... Uh, life? No, not really life, more uh, the ever-present, uh, om omniscient, uh, all-being uh, great one. Well, let's get fucked sound because Fletch has <laughs> found a very good line and Craig Hassel running up, better known as Mud, so we'll call him Mud because no one knows who the old Craig Hassel is, but he's got over 100 grade games with college. And there's Dickie Butler working it, working it for a try, I'll tell you. Well, it doesn't look like Dickie Butler to me, it looks like Peter Fitzsimons. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll say it again, he worked for the try for Fitz to crash through. <laughs> Good play, Dick Butler. That's all Dickie Butler and Pete Fitzsimons, strong as ever, running it through, through the heart of what should have been uh, Hornsby defence. Pretty feeble stuff. And I don't mind telling you, Ernie Dingo was the man who missed the tackle. <laughs> he wasn't there to be seen. Well, a lot you knew know about football, Peter. Dave Fletcher scored that try. That was Dave Fletcher's try for mine. Because of the fact that he kept right out of the way. Yeah, it was well done by Fletcher. He kept, he kept to the blind side. The ball went to the open. Brilliant, brilliant play. Well, I've no doubt, doubt, mate. If I'd been out there, it would have been my try long ago. <laughs> Pete, if you had been out there, mate, Hornsby would have, would have bloody resigned well, by now. There was talk... Uh, late last week and I'm talking around about to as, as late as Thursday night that uh, we may actually get an appearance from me in the last five minutes. Um, I didn't bring me boots or me socks or me shorts but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, you don't need them mate with your, your talent. And Fletch has missed the goal but that's not so important. Well it is important but I mean it's it's got them within one try of it anyhow if you know what I mean. Well, I'd, I'd call that a rather important uh, kick. Well, mate, 13-12, 13-10, you still need a try, really, don't you? You uh, could get it with a goal, but... field goal, even. Or a field goal. Very important one. <laughs> very, very important, important miss goal. Missed. Uh, but that's got them well within striking range now and probably with their tails up a bit, and they'd know that. I'm looking for, a, for a, probably a bit more involvement from Beaky in the second half. i tell you what, I think we could do with a couple of replacements, Pete. A bit of new blood. Bit of new blood indeed, and I wouldn't mind getting, uh, <coughs> I'd getting, like, getting some blood off some of these women around here just quite oh. I'd like to see uh, the likes of uh, Hazelwood. Hazelwood. Hazelwood out there on the wing, bit of added pace. Here's Gary George. He's been around for a while, Gary. He's uh, played for college several seasons back, and that's why he's so well known here. I mean, no other reason why he'd be playing first grade football. Dave Fletcher, he's been round for a few years now too. He's been very round for a few years, but he's got a magnificent kick. I'll tell you what, I haven't seen a better kick in Uni Cup in the two seasons I've been associated with it. Dave Fletcher, probably within the last 10, 15 minutes of his career, has pulled off what can only be the greatest kick in rugby league. Well, I mean, he knows every blade of grass. Well, in, in the case of this football field, every bit of dirt uh, on this uh, football field, and, and that was Scrum screwing, scrum screwing, and somehow Hornsby have won it. I'd say uh, Ernie Dingo has been tackled. I tell you what, Dave Fletcher, he'd make bloody Trevor Holmes jealous after that leg break, mate. Hey? Yeah, yeah, mate, mate, mate. Yeah, shit, yeah. 
And uh, don't be surprised if we suddenly see Dave Fletcher do a couple of tackles. <laughs> and I see him moving up. And there he is. He's down low and on his own. That's, <laughs> that's excitement. That's excitement for you, all right. Easy yardage, but that's off the ground, surely, sir. Pretty sloppy. Play on, good ruling. Sloppy Terry. play from Hornsby with a uh, three-point break and in their own, well, well within their own half. Sloppy play. They've got the ball, we haven't. And there's a kick, centre field. Hosty's the man. Well, you wouldn't want to be man with Gaddy. Plenty of room to work. Ernie Dingo's been beaten. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. It's Harrow. Well, <laughs> Fletch is there. Well, in that case, see what happened, Peter, was that Gaddy had 50 yards to run. Uh, Harrow needed to run five yards to get up with him, and he couldn't, he couldn't keep up. Fair enough, fair enough. But Dave Fletcher was there. And uh, like, uh, like Hampo we mentioned earlier, always ready to pick up the dregs. But here's the man himself, Hampo, weaving his own magic through the defence. Geez, that sounded good. Another man who likes to weave magic. No, it's good, not shit. Good it's, uh, comment from Mish. It's Beaky. As the ball's coughed up about 12 out, Ernie Dingo's got it. Scampers steals two or three from dummy half. Settler plays the ball back. Now I wonder, oh well, nothing happening. No idea. Hornsby in trouble. Uh, that's dummy Mate, half. That's... Throw an Indian blanket over the lot of them. They're gone, Hornsby. They are gone. They're out <laughs> of puff. They've had enough. Dummy half played a rival Ben Elias there, wasn't it? Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. They'd rival him. Yeah, I... Hornsby shot birds. They are. They're gone. They Bent are force. <laughs> they're, they're best to pass them now. Stay all bread. And uh, an ordinary pass. The clearance kick was on. That man's about 15 yards offside. Well, tough kick for Gaddy, but it doesn't matter. No, College are only 35 yards out. They've got the feed and they've got out. the upper hand. Rugby league's a yardage game and uh, we're in their half with the feed. Now, well, the only thing that's going to stop is if the ref suddenly decides he'll ping us for a uh, second row feed here. And Terry Tunkinus could do that. Well, he hasn't got his fans in the scrum either. Gaddy, Gaddy, not the safest hands in rugby league, but by golly, he can run. <laughs> Somehow he managed to hang on to it. Oh, shit, sorry, mate. Step jink. This is Gary Tui, or affectionately known out uh, New South Wales Uniway as the fucking pussy. But oh. we won. Uh, they didn't. Well, Ernie Dingo, uh, possibly a bit of a defensive problem. Oh, yeah, he can't tackle. <laughs> that's it. And he's hanging back, and that's probably why he was on the bench, but he was involved in that tackle. Mind you, the player was already on the way down against It's difficult to, to exactly yeah, explain tough. what Ernie Dingo's defensive problem is. But I think... It's the fact that he can't tackle. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it's because he can't tackle. And anyway, was, uh, college are only five out. yards out. It goes out. Oh, that was forward. Forward for mine. Six, well, to, go. Six, Six to go, mate. Gary Tui finds a, a very keen and uh, working Gary George, who's gone very, very close. Let's remember, they only need to score a four-pointer. Goals aren't important here. There's that move they worked earlier, and it worked well before. Well, I'd like to see Peter Fitzsimons on the burst. Unfortunately, he's at dummy half. He's there. It's well, a try, mate. That's uh, the game. It's over. Oh, it's all over here. It's all over, bar the shouting and the drinking. On. It's over. Scenes of jubilation. College have got home. Hornsby, they're tired, they're out on their feet, they've had enough. Ernie Dingo laying down the law in his own sort of language, he's had enough. <laughs> uh, not much you can say about that comment except to shut up. <laughs> so. Well, thanks, Peter. A bit of quiet commentary because someone just told uh, Peter to shut up. Although he did get your name wrong, Peter. He called you Rex. I, I can't. Why would he call you Rex? I can't understand that. Oh, I don't know, mate. I don't know. Probably Rex ran some happily or something like that. He probably meant uh, shut up sex, because you are sex on legs. Demon, mate. Demon. Sexual demon. Sexual dynamo. Sexual dynamo. It's sexual dynamo. Peter Bowd. John Douglas down there, the veteran. Speaking of sexual dynamos, we've got, we've got Martin Anderson out there, and, and he really is the complete footballer, isn't he? Almost. He's almost a complete footballer. If he had a neck, he would be the complete footballer, wouldn't he, Martin Anderson? He would be if he had a neck. And I, and I, I think it's a surprise here that college... College branded the bad boys of rugby league in today's grand final, and that's purely because Macquarie Uni aren't out there. I tell you what, it'd be justice here today if Dave Fletcher got this goal. It would be. The last time he kicked in the game was a great kick. Now, I think he's going to ruin his record here, but I won't put the. Well. <laughs> 
<laughs> you got to laugh. No, you've got to laugh. Mate, he nearly found touch with that one as well. <laughs> but, uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. I have never seen a worse display of kicking as this grand final day. I mean, I know the winds are swirling, but, I mean, these guys are professionals. Well, they're not. They're amateurs, but, <laughs> God, they're looking amateurish, do well, they? They're professionals. They're just not professional footballers. Dave Fletcher's a teacher. He should know about things like that. I'd hate to be in his class. Dave Fletcher is so inaccurate, mate, that uh, someone could be uh, acting up on the other side of the class and you'd get the blame for it. <laughs> well, that's the sort of bloke he is, isn't he? But uh, chances are, if he was given the cane, he'd probably miss the kid and hit that kid anyhow. <laughs> so it uh, really wouldn't matter. <laughs> Here he is now. Let's see what he does. Well, it's, it's not going to go out on the full because it's not a kick for touch. Well, safe kick. Safe kick. I tell you what, that went nearer the goalpost than his last goal kick. <laughs> did it that. And at 14-13, this is what you want to play, safety football. One of the greatest grand finals to go down. At, uh, it matches the 77 Cup final, Eastern Suburbs, Western Suburbs, 7-6. Well, it matches it for intensity, doesn't it? Yes, and in fact, the score was 6-5, not 7-6. I correct myself. But here they go now. Hornsby looking to do something with the ball. Um... When we talk about justice being done, I've got to look over at the scoreboard and I see we're ahead 14-13, but I also see we're ahead four tr three tries to two. And, uh, you know, I think really the team that scores the most tries has got to win the football game. And nobody really wants the ball. Fitzsimons oh. cleans up the mess. We've got a dead man. Oh, Tom McMartin's uh, waved his arm. Stretcher. It's a stretcher case. Stretcher case. Oh, come on, sir. Tom, off. someone could get killed. Someone could get killed, Peter. Gary George, I think. It is Gary George. Look, Traxic Pants, he's, he's bringing out the stretcher. He, he, he dreams of this sort of thing. And Anderson warms up, Anderson man of the match up. in the second grade. He could, winder. he could come on and be man of the match in this grade, couldn't well, he? I'll tell you what, they'll look to get around centre field because Anderson can kick them from anywhere, those field goals. Flash! I don't believe it! Oh, I thought he was coming on to play. Now, there's some pretty sloppy football out there. Gary George is in trouble. The referee's going to call time off here. Well, I, I am very relieved. I actually thought that uh, Flash was going to come on, uh, uh, but it's not. Daniel Anderson, it's Daniel Anderson, Anderson coming on. Well, well 17, jump to 17, it's clean. And he looks keen too to get on with the job, as keen as mustard. Well, Gary he was here George in the refuses. first grade grand final last year. He's had, he's had an unlucky season with selections. Well, the fact is, Garrett, John McMartin does not like him, basically. And uh, if you're not liked John, by John McMartin, or if you did not live in the Cronulla district, you simply will not play first grade football. You will not play representative football. Are you suggesting, Peter, that you deserve to play representative football? <laughs> I wasn't talking about me. <laughs> talking about Dan Hope, and there he is. Man of the match. There's a big cheer goes up for Flash as he comes on. Well played, Flash. A big game from Flash, and he's carrying some lump over his shoulder at the moment. Started out as a ward on his shoulder. And it grew into a Gary George. <laughs> Horrible festering Gary George. Well, Anderson's out there. At least that'll pick up the defensive rate. Yeah, and maybe he'll cruel have a... Cruel rule, mate. Cruel rule. Now, yeah, Peter McCallum. It is a cruel rule, that one. Peter McCallum warming up, too. He's going he's gonna to help crunch up that defence. Well, he deserves to have a run in first grade. For mine, he was just probably... Just the second best player, only a shadow behind uh, young Dan Anderson. That would explain why when you were commentating you gave the two points to Pat Prio. Uh, I didn't give two points to anyone, mate. I wasn't here. Yes, you were. But, um, you were. <laughs> but, well, only because he scored the try and he was in the uh, twilight of his career. But <laughs> Try scoring machine, he'll be back playing in the backs next season, contrary to his mother's belief. <laughs> Pat Prio. Pat Prio. I was speaking to his mother a little earlier. I was having a bit of an interview there. Uh, not on camera as it was. But uh, she was saying, this is the end of his career, he's finishing today. And I, uh, I was quick to say, no, he's back next season uh, and he'll be playing in the backs. Now he's scored no fewer than something like eight tries this year, which is uh, a record for Pat. And it, uh, it would be a record for me if I'd scored eight tries in one season. It'd be a record for my career. Mine too, actually. I haven't scored that many. My, I've set up probably 15 or 16. but um, 100. 100. 100. <laughs> Sorry, I always talk in hundreds. And... Uh, Anyhow, back to the action. As we see Phil Host into dummy half, and that'd be because he's a legend and he wants to settle things down. And a penalty. Well, good ruling. Penalty, that could be enough. Well, Ernie Dingo. Get your hands off him, Ernie. 
It wasn't Ernie. It was Ernie, Dingo. I saw him. He put his hand on Phil O's head. And Phil just get said, your hand off him and get it back on your didgeridoo, eh? <laughs> he said, he said, mate, I'm leading 14, 13. I've played 206 games. I'm a legend. Well, he didn't have to say any more because Ernie knew that he was a no. But uh oh, who's trouble? Oh no. Well, trouble with a capital uh, F for Fletcher, as uh, he somehow found touch, and he's uh, number 18 on, is it? Well, Kel, uh, is it Kel Overton? Uh, thing you're coming on. Well, Peter McCallum must be on, is he? Kill Overton uh, won the third grade grand final with Skipper last year and got man of the match. He came back, he won the second grade this year. Wasn't Skipper, but he had a big game and uh, let's face it, it's a team game. And Fletch has done the most fundamental knock-on you'd ever want to see in a rugby league game. No pressure on at all and he's coughed up the pill. But anyhow, getting back to Kill Overton, I'd say he'll probably be going on there to, to probably get up a first grade uh, premiership too for the college. Well, why not? Oh, no. Trouble, bit of trouble. But uh, somehow college got out of it. There was a chance, half a chance for uh, Hornsby. They didn't take it. Now it's out the Hornsby back line and they're quick. But we've got the numbers out there at the moment. But they're throwing it around. It's a hot potato at the moment. And brought down about six metres on the Hornsby side, on their own side. Ernie Dingo with a long ball. And not a bad, good pickup actually, a great pickup. Ernie Dingo accidentally passed it to the winger there. He was actually trying to pass it to the guy inside, but hey. That's a result that counts in rugby league. He's Ernie Dingo now, and I'm just wondering if, if Hornsby were to lose this game, if he wouldn't hang himself at the end of the match, <laughs> as uh, so often as his forefathers have. Well, it's gone That's an, oh, well, what kind of a ruling is that? <laughs> well, that's the ruling where this team's behind on the scoreboard. I'll make it a knockback instead of a knock-on. Cheers! Martin Anderson! Martin Anderson! He's got the ball! Oh, he's put it down! Well, international, Sminner national. <laughs> I tell you. Say it again, mate. Say it again. International, Sminner national. That's Pete, Ma Pete that McCallum. Enough? Yeah, that's enough. Pete McCallum's warming up in jumper number 18 on now, the sideline. He does look like Gary Schofield. He does. Big wise. He looks a bit like Flash, too. Only Pete McCallum can run. Can tackle. And uh, doesn't run out of puff after two minutes of play. <laughs> Oh, good hit from Pete. Oh, he had a big arm there and he didn't like it either, the fella. Peter McCallum doesn't have tits bigger than any girl I've ever got onto. No, <laughs> he doesn't either. But he's got something and that's a big ticker, mate. And he's a Maris boy. 23 coming on. He looks like a, uh, a golf club with ears. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Six more, Ernie Dingo in possession. Fellas are going down. There's a bit of confusion out there. They've got numbers here, Hornsby. Plugging holes. I see him calling shots. Mate, there's players going down like a brothel here. Tell you what. Oh, they're, they're just running all over the place at the moment, College. They're doing a bit of extra work. Oh, Ernie Dingo, he's at the centre. He's unstoppable. Oh, inches, mate. I'll tell you inches what, it's 14-13 with only seconds to go. About... And a bad pass is not what they needed. He's made amends for it, but they can't afford to have a bad pass at this stage, Hornsby. Ernie oh, Dingo launches off. himself into the attack. Suddenly, the college player is standing up and being counted. What the hell's he doing? Dave Fletcher. Well, he's Dave safe. And I, number five for Hornsby just lost them the grand final. <laughs> Firmly on his shoulders, he has lost them the game. They're all, they're all out, but they're Beefy's brothers and shit. Friends, so they're all out for too. Yeah, they're the Uni New South Wales and there's Daniels and he knows these people so they must be with us as well. So I've sussed out the crowd yeah, situation there on our side. Pete McCallum on and on comes the uh, golf club. Oh, Fletcher's off. I think that could be a bad decision. Number two, Daly. Is Fletcher off? Oh, I think that's a risky decision. Well, he I mean, had a good game, I thought. He Dave did. Fletcher. He had a we good, had a good game, Fletcher. <laughs> No, Fletcher had a good solid game up the centre in the engine room. I'm just wondering though, well we've got to look at it this way. If Fletch wasn't on there at all and Castle Hill had gone on with 12 players, would they have done any better? Well that all depends. Who would have taken the kicks? Well here's a penalty mate and uh, probably no one would have taken the kicks, which would have been better really. <laughs> kicks for line and uh, also kicks for goal. Well I still don't think Fitzsimons, he hasn't got the distance with his kicks to be the main kicker, has he? I mean, how far do you reckon that kick went? Not real far, but he is a uni, or uni former union player and he knows what a kicking game's about. There's... International. <laughs> Dual international. Um, 
is uh, Dickie Butler, Mart, stalwarts, stalwarts wanting to make amends for last year's loss, wanting to get that that uh, elusive grand final victory and what a year it's been for Castle Hill. And here's Pete Sheridan and there's Mark Harrington for some reason kicking. He kicks every time he gets well. And there's Mrs Host. Oh yes, there's Mrs Host. We'd almost forgotten about her. But, um, there's a bit of a buzz around the commentary box and we'll just pen in on her. She's got a couple of kids with her. And uh, there's Phil out there too. The other, the other half, the better half, some people would say. Not very many. <laughs> Not very many at all. I don't know anyone who would say I don't that. know anyone either, but I'd, maybe his mother. Maybe Phil. Surely his mother loves him. He's got that sort of body, hasn't he, really, that only a mother could love. <laughs> the gangly, funny arms, a pass off the ground, and it's gone to Beaky, who's clutching at an eye. But uh, the damage has been done for, uh, for uh, what's the name again? Hornsby. Hornsby. And there's Mud. Solid as the rock of Gibraltar. Solid as two rocks of Gibraltar. <laughs> Hosty legend. Let's just call him legend. Well, he sets, settles it down, the legend. Yes, Mish. Gary, too. Is... Well, that's well a yes. Made a little earlier today. It's sort of like the reversal to last year. Losing. Winning first third grade, Sorry. winning third grade last year and losing this year, losing the main two games last year, but blatantly winning them this year. Well, it's it's the uh, it's the pinnacle of irony, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a fickle game, rugby league. John Stulinovich, 998. Yep, at this very ground, at around about the 128 mark. That was, and uh, in terms of football, we're just outside the Hornsby quarter, and you can see the shadows starting to long over the ground. Lengthen would have been a better word probably to have used there. Too long over the ground, did you say? <laughs> I, was, I was sort of saying long and... But uh, Daniel Anderson involved there, and there's the... Uh, I think he's about a two-iron with ears. <laughs> he's moving into dummy half. He's relatively clean, though. He's hard to pick because not many of them are dirty. The crowd aren't happy, but there the other refs decide to have a look at the five. Oh, what a pick-up! Highlight of the game for me so far, Pete, that pickup. Yep, uh, not for me though. <laughs> yeah. Some people are pretty easily pleased. The highlight for me was the replacement of Dave Fletcher. <laughs> well, I thought that was a low lot. I thought that was a, that was a fast from Dave Daly. How could he replace the most penetrating forward? Uh, easily. <laughs> By bringing on a bloke who uh, can tackle, <laughs> who can probably kick and uh, doesn't have a weight problem. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, you've got a weight problem because you'll be waiting around for Dave Fletcher to kill you. <laughs> uh, Dave, understanding Blake as he is sitting down there, he wouldn't be standing, and uh, he's into about his fourth meat pie since he came <laughs> off. Here's the fellow who replaced him, Pete McCallum. Takes about four or five metres, and there's Phil Host. Well, not wasting the time with the double play, trying to get the kick in straight to Phil Host with a deep penetrating kick. And that's off the upright. Well, that's they don't get much more feet. deep or penetrating than Phil Ace, do they? Look at that. <laughs> they don't. When you're talking deep and talking penetrating, you're talking Phil Host. And uh, he's coming in off the uh, crossbar, off the upright there. <laughs> oh, he's looking very upright too, isn't he, Phil Host there? He's looking good. Yeah, has that fella got grey hair or has he got head gear on? Penalty. He's, he's answering the crowd here. Tony, uh, Terry, Terry Tunkinis. Terry answering the crowd. They well, wanted the penalty and they got it. Well, 14-13, and you couldn't think of a better finale to a great season of rugby league, could you, Peter? A fine, a fine, great 40 minutes. With the ball coming wide, high tackles, and he's just fallen over. <laughs> penalty time, no. Stacks on the mills. Ah, oh, well, great tackle from Harrow. It's good defence, Harrow. Coming in off his wing to make the tackle. They've still going to the right. Daniel Anderson's over there. Well, there won't be any try oh, scored through there. Off the ground, you're kidding, sir. And change over. Marty Anderson. That sounds like a pretty serious injury for Daniel Anderson. Sore ankle. That's the official description from the doctor. Well, well, listen, <laughs> the bloke who's got the camera, you've only got to have a cold and you're out for about four weeks. <laughs> 
Here's Harrow. I wish he'd get a cold and be out for four weeks. No such luck. He's having a good game today, Harrow, and I'm not going to bag him. <laughs> no, he is I'm having a good game. Him. I wonder if he can kick. Well, I've got no idea. I wish he wouldn't. It would be a good part of, to his game if he could add a kicking game oh, to it. Well, it didn't stop Dave Fletcher. <laughs> didn't stop Dave Fletcher having a kick, and, and we all know uh, he, he hasn't got a kicking game. He hasn't got a game. <laughs> but here's Marty Anderson in the tummy R. Runs himself up the blind, a narrow blind, international, making yards. Gets a great ball. Hampo. Hampo's put it down, or has he kicked it? I don't know. It's gone over the sideline. We'll have a scrum for the knock on. What have you thought about Terry Tunkinus's game today? Well, I thought he's had a pretty good game, actually. I'd rate him, you know, five and a half out of ten. Yep. Which is pretty high rating for me. Yep, I'd match it. I'll match yours, five and a half, and I'll go up half. I'm giving him six, mate. Well, I'll match your six. Then I'm going to throw in. I'm going to throw in one of the touch judges and give them all eight. Oh, a lot of them. Oh, a lot of them and oh, eight. Thirty seconds of play left. We're at the right end of the field. If you want to win a football game and you're in blue. Some good defensive play here, and we're getting a bit of an offer we can't refuse. Ernie Dingo's off the ground. Somebody wants to buy our photography. That means a bloody commentary will go with it. <laughs> Holy fuck, we're in the shit. Ernie Dingo is this. He's a lovely bloke. In fact, all the Hornsby blokes are lovely guys. Bunch They're of a good right bunch right. of fellas. There it is! <laughs> well, Collins have won today, and it's a great day for rugby league. And uh, Peter, man of the match points, 3-2-1. Oh, mate, I don't know. A whole lot of them. A whole lot of them. Brilliant games. Well, uh, for the mine, race. I've given... I've given uh, Dick three. Dick Butler in the engine room. Let's have a mud. The captain. I've, I've given. This. I've given one point to Steve Hampson. Two points to Peter Fitzsimons, and three points in the man of the match to Dave Fletcher. Yep, no doubt, mate. His kicking game was the one that won it. I'm going down to actually congratulate Dave on his game. Yeah. Now the uh, official speaker for the game. Um. <laughs> this guy who's speaking now is a loser. No, not me, the guy on the other end. Thank you. 